There are many ways that Lithuania and the Baltic nations in general are very, very much a part of Europe. The most obvious is that they are, well, members of the European Union. Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia also use the Euro and are part of the Schengen Zone to allow relatively free movement across much of Europe. But at least at the time of making this video, there's one major thing that keeps the Baltics disconnected from the rest of the European Union. It's energy grid. Okay, maybe at this point we should also acknowledge that much of the railway lines across the three Baltic countries are a different gauge than the rest of Europe. But you can check out my Rail Baltica video to learn more about that. But going back to electricity, Lithuania and the other Baltic nations are currently not part of the European Network of Transmission System Operators for Electricity, or ENSO-E. Instead, they are a part of the IPS slash UPS, which stands for Integrated Power System slash Unified Power System. The Unified Power System was started in 1956, and by 1978, this system included all of the Soviet Union except for Central Asia. According to an article by Elritas.lt, Lithuania's electricity grid operates synchronously with the IPS slash UPS system, which connects the energy systems of Belarus, Russia, Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania in the so-called Brel Ring. This is based on an agreement between the five countries, which was signed in 1998, an agreement that provides for the frequency of the power system to be centrally managed and coordinated by a dispatching center in Moscow. That's right, Lithuania and other Brel countries remain dependent on the control center in Moscow and the Russian electricity system. Crazy, right? But apparently, if Russia disconnected Lithuania or the other Baltic countries, there wouldn't be much of an impact. That's because of a standing agreement with the EU to synchronize with the European network system within 24 hours, should Moscow decide to disconnect Lithuania or any of the other Baltic countries. Um, maybe at this point I should note that I don't understand much about electricity and electrical grids, particularly when it comes to frequencies, kilovolts, kilowatt hours, and all that technical stuff. But I do know that when a city or a country is connected to a grid, it results in the power generated being shared to all those on the grid. And when demand surges in one area, then it affects everyone else connected to that grid. In 1979 through to 1993, the power systems of Poland, the German Democratic Republic, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, Romania, and Bulgaria operated synchronously with the unified power system of the USSR. But these countries are now part of the synchronous grid of continental Europe. The electricity grids in continental Europe and Russia have some differences in terms of grid infrastructure and interconnections. First, there's frequency. The first notable difference is the frequency of the electricity grid. Continental Europe operates on a frequency of 50 Hz, while Russia uses a frequency of 50 Hz in most regions, but 60 Hz in certain areas like the Kaliningrad Oblast. This frequency difference affects the synchronization and compatibility of electrical equipment used in each region. And number two is about interconnections. Central Europe, continental Europe has a well-developed and extensive network of interconnected power systems. Various countries in the region are linked through high voltage transmission lines, allowing for the exchange and sharing of electricity across borders. This interconnected grid enables efficient distribution, balancing of loads, and backup support during emergencies. Russia's grid, while also interconnected within the country, is less integrated with the European grid. And for number three, the grid structures in continental Europe and Russia may have some differences in terms of transmission and distribution systems. However, both regions have a mix of high-voltage transmission lines, substations, and distribution networks to deliver electricity from power plants to consumers. It's important to note that these are general differences, and there may be variations in grid configurations and interconnections within each region. So while Lithuania and the Baltic countries are part of this Russian system, an agreement to decouple from the Russian grid was first signed in 2018. Lithuania has opened new electricity links to Sweden and Poland, as the Baltic country aims to fully integrate its power grids with the European Union. Then in 2019, Lithuanian president at the time, Dalia Grybauskaitė, signed a legislative package aimed at facilitating the smooth synchronization of the Lithuanian electricity grid with the continental European system. A week later, the Baltic countries and Poland signed an agreement with the European Commission for an Implementation Roadmap, 
for the synchronization project. The goal of searching systems had a target date of late 2025. Of course, with Russia's invasion of Ukraine, many of those in power, no pun intended, have been trying to speed up the process. The most interesting piece of news regarding the transition came recently in July 2023. Apparently, despite Lithuania's desire to switch power grids early, like sometime in 2024, this isn't going to be possible because of Estonia. LRT reported that Estonia will only be able to modify its electricity grid to allow for a switch in 2025. Rokas Masulis, CEO of Lithuania's LitGrid, had previously alleged that Estonia's operator was doing everything to postpone the move. Masulis was quoted as saying, the way things are going, we are still dependent on Estonia. So if they don't change their position, unfortunately, it will be according to their schedule, not ours, because we can't leave the Braille system alone. On the other side of the debate, the head of the Estonian transmission operator alleges that Lithuania's wish to make the switch 18 months early is merely due to domestic politics. So Lithuanians, and I guess Latvians, maybe this is the perfect time to crack a joke about Estonians being slow. Am I right? Anyways, my takeaway from all of this is that it makes total sense that Lithuania wants to decouple from the Russian system as soon as possible. The Russian government has shown the world in so many ways that it just can't be trusted. Lithuania has its own memories of energy blackmail with Russia and the Soviet Union, and it wants to do everything possible to be fully separated from anything that Moscow can control. We were challenged in the beginning of 90s, uh, maybe you don't, do not remember, but I, I, I do. There were empty streets because there was no gas, no, no cars. Uh, it was winter time, I remember, and cold in the flats. It was kind of a lesson to us because you'd like to be independent, so okay, you can be independent. And this is a price. And with the invasion of Ukraine taking place a few years after the decoupling agreement was formed, the recent events just add one more major reason to speed things up. So are you aware of this big change happening? Would you speed things up if you could? well, let me know by leaving a comment. Also, if you know more about this topic than my video has presented, please do leave it in the comment section, especially if there's something important that I missed. So for the Lithuanian word of the day, let's go with the verb to disconnect. Atsijungti. Atsijungti. To disconnect. Thanks so much again for watching, and I'll see you next time.